Let's take a look at um, some of the basic things you can do with the calculator. Um, first thing, kind of important, is how to turn it on. Okay, so lower left, you just press on. And on some of your calculators, you might see the screen darker or lighter. Um, so if you want to make it brighter or darker, okay, all you have to do is press second. Okay, that's the blue key in the upper left. And then up. Okay, I can't do it on the one on the computer, but if you press second and press up, it should get brighter. And how do you think you make it darker? Yeah, yeah you press second, and if I hold down, it gets as dark as it can. Okay. Second, up, gets as bright as it can. Okay, so you can adjust the darkness, brightness, however, however it's best for you. Okay, not as important on these calculators, but on, um, on the older ones, what would eventually happen is as the batteries would die, the screen would get dimmer and dimmer. So you couldn't see the text on it anymore. Right? This one, I don't know if I can show you. Let's see. I can't really see it. But on the old ones, it would get dimmer. Okay, not as much of an issue with the, uh, with the new ones. All right, what else? Um, clear. Okay, so if you've got some stuff on the screen and you want to just clear it, you press the button uh, in the up, well, kind of right below the directional pad. You just press clear. Okay, and that'll clear everything that's, that's on um, the line you're working on. So if you've got something like this, if I press clear now, it's only going to clear the line that I'm working on. If I press it again, then it clears the whole screen. Okay. Um, contrast, we just talked about. Okay, enter. Anytime you want to evaluate something that you've plugged in, you've got to press enter. Okay, some calculators you don't. You could type 2 plus 7, and it would just say 9. And thus, you've got to hit enter. Um, second. Okay, so you've already kind of used the second button a little bit, but in general, second allows you to access any of these functions in, in blue. All right, so let's say... Um, Let's say you wanted to put in like a, a less than sign. Well, you can do a less than. It's under this menu called uh, test. Okay, but to get to test, you've got to press second and then press math. Okay, so if you press second, math, then you can see your less thans, greater thans, and all that stuff. Okay, we also have one more button. Okay, basically, that allows us to type in letters. So if you press alpha, now you can access all the letters. On mine, they're in green. Um, they could be different colors on yours. Okay, and what the letters are mostly used for is um, variables, storing stuff in, into a variable. Okay, let's say uh, you got an answer of you know, 25 and a half, and you want to save that answer for use later on. Okay? What you could do is press the store button, STO, okay, it's right down by the number four. You should see a little arrow on the screen. And then you can pick any letter you want to put it in. Okay, let's just put it in, um, in B. So if I want to store that answer in B, just press alpha, B. And there's one more thing I got to press to tell it to do that. What do you think I have to press now? Yeah, I got to press enter. Now we just stored that number into B. And you can do arithmetic with that letter. So if I wanted to say b times 2, okay, I could do that, and it'll work fine. Um, what should I get when I do b times 2? 51. Okay. And you can store something in every single letter that's in green on there. Right? So you've got a lot of different places you could store stuff um, if you wanted to. I'd say the only time that's useful is if you're going to be using a number over and over and over many, many times, I would store it. If you just have to use it one time, why well, save it? You don't need to. Okay. Sometimes we want to keep using um, the keypad, the, the letters, for some reason. You can actually keep it locked on letters. So, for example, if I do alpha A, okay, typed in an A, but now if I press B, it's not going to do B unless I keep pressing alpha. I've got to press alpha every time I want a letter. If I want, I can turn on alpha lock. 
by pressing second alpha. I don't do this very much, but now it's just going to stay typing in letters okay. until I go back and press second alpha, or sorry, just press alpha. Now it turned it back off. Now I'm back to numbers. Any thought what would happen if I hit enter right now? Zero. Yeah, I'm going to get zero. What, what operation is it really doing? Yeah, it's kind of like doing multiplication. There's probably a zero stored in there somewhere. In fact, most of them are zero unless you save something. Okay. Again, alpha lock, I don't really use that much. But it's there if, if you want. Um, what else? Okay, difference, bless you, difference between... Um, negative sign and the minus sign. Okay. If you want to do subtraction, that's the button on the right. Okay. Five minus nine. Okay. If you want to put in a negative, that's the button down next to the decimal. Okay. If you want to put in the number negative three. And it, it does make a difference. If you try to use a minus or a negative sign for subtraction, uh, it won't work. Okay. It gives me an error. Okay, so error generally means you type something in wrong, the calculator's not sure, sure what to do. All right, um, what else? Okay, powers. Uh, does anybody know how you do exponents on here? There's a couple ways you can do it if the exponent is low. Yep, otherwise you can yeah, use that up arrow. Perfect. Uh, does anybody know another way I could do um, an exponent of two without the up arrow? Yeah. Yeah. You could do six, and you could square it. The square button is on the left-hand side. Five buttons down. Okay. Or if you wanted to use the up arrow, you can also do six. Notice how this calculator actually puts the number up higher. Okay, it looks like an exponent. Um, if you're using an older one, it won't put it up higher. It'll actually show that little carrot looking thing, okay. but it's the same, same thing. All right, so X, we've got powers. Um, how would I type in, uh, let's say, negative 3 squared? And I want to square the negative the 3. I want the whole thing squared. Uh, don't you have to use parentheses? Yep, you've got to use parentheses. That's what you get. That's what you should get. Negative 3 times negative 3, positive 9. What do you think I'm going to get if I do that? Uh, yeah. Good. I get negative 9. Because right, what happened there is it just squared the 3 and threw a negative in front. All right, so be very careful with, with parentheses um, on the calculator. Um, all right, so if we can raise something to a power, what's the opposite of raising something to a power? Square. Yeah, the opposite of a square is a square root. Okay, and we have, we have a button for that. This time you've got to use second, and it's the x squared button. So second, x squared, type something in, we get five. Okay, so we have a button for squaring. We have a button for square rooting. If you've got something that's higher than a power of, of two or three, you just use that caret key, five raised to the, um, Eighth power. Okay. And you can also type in roots that are higher than a square root. Okay, the way you'd have to do it, um, let's say you want a cube root. Let's do the cube root of 64, um, which would be, what is the cube root of 64? Uh, square root of 64 is 8. Cube root is 4 times 4 times 4 would give you 64. All right. And let's say I want to, I didn't know that, I want to check it. To do a cube root, you type in a 3. And now we have to go to the math menu. Under math, the fifth option down basically has a little x. And it's going to take whatever number I just typed in, which was a 3, and it's going to fill it in for that little x. So it's going to do a cube root of 64. All right, so that's how you can do powers as high as you want, or roots as high as you want. <coughs> Yeah, any questions so far on what we typed in?
All right. Um, what's it called when you take a fraction and you flip it? Yeah, the reciprocal. Uh, there's a button on here for finding a reciprocal. Okay, so let's say you want to take 0.2 and you want to flip it. Okay, 0.2, that, that's as a decimal, that's one fifth, okay, as a fraction. So when I flip it, it should be 5 over 1. Okay, let's check it. The key right below math, it says x to the negative 1. That button will take a number and flip it. Okay. You could also use the up arrow and type in negative 1 as the power. It would be the same thing. Okay, so sometimes it's handy if you have to flip a fraction, you can use, you can use that button. Um, editing. All right. So let's say you've got something typed in, kind of long. You want to go back and just fix one thing, but you don't want to type the whole thing in again. All right, so let's say we took the sine of 45 times the cosine of 35 plus 6. And we say, oh, you know what? We didn't want that sine of 45. We wanted sine of 47. Well, all we have to do is use your left arrow, go back, highlight what you want to change, and change it. But if you already enter it? If you've already hit enter, sure, I can show you what happens. So let's say you did that and you say, oh, you know what, I really, I meant 45, I didn't mean 47. If you press second and you press enter, it'll take the last thing you typed in and bring it back up. And in fact, you can keep doing that. It'll keep going back through many, many things that I've typed in. Okay, now, what if I had something like this? Say cosine of 35. And I want to make it 450. What's going to happen if I just press 0 right now? Uh, it's going to move. It's going to what? It's going to move or delete something. Yeah, what's going to happen is it's going to take that parenthesis and it's going to get rid of it. Okay. So what I want to do is I don't want to copy over what's there. I want to insert something. Okay. There's a button for that. Second, delete. Now what it's going to do is it's going to insert, and it'll keep inserting, right? So that way I don't wipe out that parenthesis. So that's handy, especially if you type something in that's kind of long. You don't want to go back and redo the whole thing. OK, um, what else? OK, I already showed you how to recall something. Um, I forget how far back you can go. I know you can go at least, probably at least 10 or 15 of the last thing you typed in. You can just keep going back. Um, what else? All right, let's say I want to use this answer to do something. Okay, I want to take that answer um, and double it. Well, there's a button here that will pull up the last answer that was on the screen, and it's second negative symbol. Okay, what that does is it says ANS. ANS is the last answer that I typed in. So I could take that answer and say subtract 1 from it. Again, kind of handy if you don't want to have to type in 6.81915 and so on to do a calculation with it. Okay, any questions on that? All right, so last thing I'll, I'll show you, and then I want to give you guys a little time to kind of play with it on your own, um, is basic, basic graphing. Okay. So when you press y equals, okay, this brings you into your graph screen. All right? So if you wanted to say graph a line, okay, line with a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 3, okay, you could type it in just like you've seen from y equals mx plus b. Press 2, and then your variable, you've got to use x. Okay, that's right next to stat, right below mode. Okay, there's your variable. 2x plus 3. Now, anytime you graph something, the first thing I usually do is set my window. Okay? In other words, set what I'm looking at. Okay? So we can control what part of the x-axis we're seeing and what part of the y-axis. A good, good starting point for most graphs is to press the zoom button and go to 6. Okay? That's called a standard window. 
And what a standard window is going to do is it's going to set it from negative 10 to 10 and negative 10 to 10 on the x and the y axis. And I'd say that's actually a pretty good, pretty good picture here. Um, sometimes we need to adjust our window. For example, if I shifted this line up 20 units, now if I graph it, it's, it's going off the screen. So now it's not as good of a window. What I might want to do is make it so I can see a little higher. Okay, so I can press window. And maybe I want my Y max to be up at 30. Okay, this, there's a lot of times there's not a right or wrong answer for your window. You just play with it till you can see more of the picture. That, that looks a little better. Okay. Maybe I'd want to go to the left a little bit more just so I can see my x-intercept. Uh, but that's fine. All right, so this is where we'll, we'll spend a ton of time okay, with graphing, adjusting the window, and zooming. Um, another nice thing you can do is sometimes you want to plug a value in for x and see what you get for your y. The calculator can do that automatically. It's got a table built in. Right, so if I press second table, okay, go ahead and try it, second graph. I can say put 2 in for x, and it tells me what y would be. Okay, let's just check and see if that's right. Put 2 in for x, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 20 is 24. So it's a quick way to just plug in different numbers and see what you get. Now, on some people, I don't think it'll happen on my calculators, but if you've got your own calculator, is anybody using their own and they can't type in any numbers here? There's a list of numbers already there, they can't edit it? Yeah, so what, what you have to do is go to second table setup, that second window, and put the x variable on ask. If you put it on auto, what it'll do is it fills it in for you, and I can't control what I type in. I can't type anything in. Right? That's fine if maybe you just want to look at 1 to 10, but if I wanted to look at, say, 50, I'd have to scroll all the way down until I get to 50. It's going to take forever. So I usually keep my table on yes. I can then type in whatever I want. All right, so any questions on that? I think that's all, all I'm going to really show you for now. Okay, that's like a half a percent of what the calculator can do, but it's some of the basic stuff we'll use all year. Um, so for the last part, I'm just going to give you guys some problems to try. Um, all on the calculator, just typing stuff in. Um, we'll take a look at them at the end of class, and then make sure for tomorrow you have the syllabus sheet signed and the calculator contract signed as well.